so welcome to the May 17th Astro Imaging Cafe for the Edmonton Center. Uh, tonight we'll be having Stuart Heggie on and he's going to tell us about uh, the RASC's Astro Imaging Certificate Program. It's kind of like the Observers Program. Um, and uh, Stuart will tell us about uh, how it works and we will also have a question and answer portion afterwards. So thank you for joining. So again, thanks Stuart for uh, agreeing to be on. I asked you a few months ago and connected with you online about uh, coming in to talk about the RASC Astro Imaging Certificate Program. So I think that is something that, um, you know, I've looked into and uh, just had a few questions about. So I thought, sure. yeah, maybe let's have you on and tell us what it's all about. Absolutely. and. Um... I don't want to, uh, uh, sp spoiler alert, uh, Luca is one of our judges. So uh, he'll help me out when we get to uh, send the question and answer stuff. So I have a deck and I can talk to that uh, and add as long as you want. And then uh, if you're interested in imaging in general, I, I, I've got slides behind that that we can look at if you want. But, uh, but the priority is to make sure the message gets out about the certificates and what's involved. So, whoops, uh, so I will share. Okay, so um, this is this is, I I'm lazy like most people, so I cannibalize pre presentations over and over again to for the purpose I have them for the moment. Um, so uh, I'll have a little introduction. If people, uh, if I don't know someone or they don't know me, I can explain a little bit about who I am. But um, but I'm going to make the the main event. The certificates and a little bit of a plug for the uh, the remote telescope and what's going to be happening there with the changes at the area C. Um, okay. Um, so as I said, I'd like to talk a little bit about me, the certificates, the SRO uh, scope situation, and then the rest of this deck I just included in case people wanted to see more. But um, the, the you know I recognize people got better things to do than me talk. Uh, so, um, uh, just my background and why I'm involved in the certificates, uh, at all is, uh, my undergrads in astrophysics from the University of Toronto. Um, I will admit it was in the early 1980s. Um, I was an avid photographer a long time prior to that. Um, then I finally could afford to buy a telescope. And so, uh, I bought a, I went to a telescope dealer and he said, oh, the scope you need is this one. And he sold me a Mead 2120, which is a 10 inch uh, LX6 uh, Schmidt-Cassegrain uh, and utterly useless for photography. So despite me telling him that's what I wanted to do. So uh, I used it visually for a while and then I ran out and bought um, uh, on the used market, a super Polaris mount with a Celestron 4 inch refractor on it called an SPC-4102. And I used that for piggyback photography for a long time with just camera lenses. Uh, in 2002, I built uh, an observatory and got serious about, um, you know, uh, imaging. Um, and I had at the time, um, uh, Los Mandy G11 and an Astrophysics 900 QMD, which is a non-go-to mount. Um, and I, I used that for a long time and then I automated it so I could image from there. Um, while I was traveling, I swapped the 900 GTO for a nine, or sorry, the 900 QMD for a 900 GTO and, uh, and, uh, motorized the roof and, uh, learned a lot about all of that and, uh, and image from there. But then, uh, as we saw retirement coming, we bought a farm near Lake Huron and, uh, built, a second observe a new observatory here moved all my gear into there and then with a friend uh, built a second one and opened a hosting business uh so we have two observatories here two peers in each so uh, i'm using two of them and clients are using the other two and uh over the years i've had i guess four different clients and uh it's been good i help people who can't image from where they live but you know have good gear and they can afford you know, stuff that's capable of re completely remote operation and uh, they just need a home for it. Um, so right now I'm the chair of the RAC Astro Imaging Committee. 
Uh, and in, if we get uh, talk a little bit about the uh, scope at SRO that the RIC owns, uh, I was the ops lead there when it started and now support the ops team. And uh, I was also on the photography team. Okay. So um, specific to the certificates, uh, and I'll take us to the link and we'll look at it. Um, and I think this has come up a couple of times and I'm not sure, you know, I don't want to claim any specific credit for why they exist at all, but I was part of a group that really swung the bat hard for why we don't, why should we should have some kind of parallel to, you know, all the uh, uh, visual certificates, you know, the Messier certificates and the NGC finest, et cetera. Um, and so I, um, uh, I gave presentations. I I had lots of reactions from groups that I would was trying to sell the idea to, saying we tried to sell this idea. We were very excited, you know, and blah blah blah. So I realized, you know, like everybody, you, this got achieved on the shoulders of a ton of people who had, you know, thought this was a good idea. It didn't get traction, maybe when they, you know, sold the, their idea, but it slowly became uh, clear that there was enough demand for this that somebody should do something. So a team was formed. I was part of, uh, we started crafting the, uh, the criteria and uh, hammered out what the, the certificates would be for and how they would work. So what we ended up with is uh, three categories, deep sky, solar system, and wide field. And we, uh, we spent a lot of time um, and it was collegial, but you know, debating what was appropriate uh, for a set of criteria for each of the categories. Um, and um, in the case of deep sky, there's a lot of emphasis on, you know, uh, proper flats, um, uh, you know, proper processing, dithered guiding, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and interestingly, during that early debate, there was um, actually, a bit of an argument about whether someone like me would be eligible because I was perceived to be cheating because I automated everything. So I sleep through my imaging sessions. <laughs> like I set everything up and I go to bed. Uh, and some uh, another, another person felt like if you're not standing beside the telescope, adjusting the focus manually over the course of the night, uh, you're not a real imager and you shouldn't be allowed to to compete for the certificate so we we went back and forth on this for a while and it was concluded if you own the gear you set it up you know how it works and uh all that the, you're eligible if you buy data from eye telescopes you're not eligible um so uh and we're going to go over this criteria in a second but uh, just to give you an idea this was not something that it was uh, self-evident and everyone just said well of course uh, we had a lot of debates about what constituted the the boundaries inside of which deep sky would be done. Then we had a similar, although much shorter debate about what solar system would look like. And then uh, a medium length debate about, you know, what would wide field uh, look like? And, uh, and specific to wide field, one of the interesting things is we continue to find ourselves talking about how that works because the essence of wide field, unlike solar system and deep sky is, there's way more uh, expectation of a sense of artistry and composition. Um, if you're going to, if you have a long tele uh, focal length telescope and you're going to take a picture M13, uh, your framing options aren't really that, that extensive. But for wide field, this is where the artistry of being a photographer comes in. And we actually have expectations like that. And, you know, Luca, if you want to jump in and say a little bit about, expand on that, I'd be happy to have you do that. I remember um, when you you mentioned that we had to uh, revisit the criteria from time to time, and a while back, we quite a while ago, we started getting submissions in the wide field category that didn't have any landscape in them at all, and the majority or the complete submission was medium to close-ups of astronomical objects or groupings or, or whatever the whatever the, the the targets were, and we realized that even though we had understood that. We, what we really wanted was a, a majority of skyscapes as opposed to straight wide field with no landscape. And so we we, had, we modified it because we were starting to get submissions that really weren't in the spirit of what we thought we knew. <laughs> but it just took some it took some submitters uh, 
some submissions to make us realize, oh yeah, we we weren't we weren't particularly clear, so we had to modify that. So so that debate continued uh, well into the program. We didn't go back and make people redo things, but we just tightened things up. So wide field has uh, a certain minimum requirement that they has to include the landscape, right? Right on. Yeah. Excellent. And, and you know, even as recently as this past winter, uh, I lost the debate about. Um, are black and white images okay for skyscapes? And uh, another one of our judges, Kimberly Sibold, who is in Alberta, although I forget where she lives now, she just moved. Um, but um, she took a great deal of exception to my statement that black and white wasn't uh, okay, and then shared a couple of black and white shots that were just jaw droppers. And I'm like, okay, okay, I, I yield. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I give in. Uh, so, you know, it's a lively thing, but it's a, it's a, it remains uh, dynamic in that, you know, is our understanding of what people do um, influences how we perceive the criteria to be, you know, um, accurately describing what we think is the, the boundaries of a uh, wide field, just like with deep sky, like with, um, you know, we've had a couple of curveballs thrown where you have to go back and say, you know, I think we weren't as clear as we should have been, but this is not okay. And uh, this is not what we meant. And um, with rare exception, people are very gracious about it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so uh, I'll go on and then we're going to look at some the the official web instructions and then and look at some of the galleries. But um, right now, the, the judging panel... Um, is uh, two experts in wide field of which Luca and Kim, Kimberly are, are those two. Uh, three uh, deep sky experts, I'm one of those, uh, Steve Holmes who lives in the Kitchener-Waterloo area and Blair McDonald in Halifax who's, and Blair you know from the journal, he writes a column about um, using images plus for image processing. And then we have uh, a guy named Art Cole also in Halifax who's a solar system guy and uh, everybody's supposed to chime in on all of them, but you know, if we get a solar system, when we expect Art to take the lead on that, if it's a wide field, we count on Luca and Kimberly to to take the lead. Um, both Luca and, and Kimberly uh, provide extensive critiques of the picture so that it's clear. They thought hard about it, and I, use, as the chair, I go back to the submitter and I explain, okay, here's what we got. Um, People are loving this one, this one, this one, and um, not as crazy about this one. Here's the weak spot on this one. If could we could we tweak this, reprocess it? Could we replace this one? You know, try to be diplomatic, but at the same time, you know, we do hold the view that the past winners set the bar. If you're going to win the certificate, you got to meet the the standards set by your peer group. Not um, we don't renegotiate the standards every submission to make the person happy. Um, and I'm going to show you some example of the give and take that we, we've undertaken. Uh, and also in my role, as Luca knows, um, I screen a lot of the submissions right out of the gate and they never get to the judges. Um, because, you know, sometimes the, the person, like I won one submission that said, you know, I don't do any image processing. I just dumped them from my camera in here and I emailed them to you. I said, oh, that's good. Uh, we're looking for a little more <laughs> effort than that. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you have to find a nice way to say it. But, uh, like, you know, if they were brilliant and mind-blowing, I would say, well, you know, you're one of the artists that does everything in camera. But these were these were pretty um, pretty much not, uh, you know, less effort than we were hoping for. But they weren't bad photos. They just needed some work. Um, okay, so here's the link to the actual certificate page. Tell me if you can, everyone can see this web page come up. Okay, good. So this is on the RAC.ca uh, and um, uh, much of what we've just talked about is on here, but um, uh, we've given some guidance on, you know, how big the file should be. And, and it, it, some of these things, you know, probably as bandwidth improves, internet access improves, you know, we could get a little more open to larger file sizes, but, you know, pretty much a a decent submission already comes as a hyperlink to Google Docs or whatever, and and the people just download them, or they put them in Dropbox and send the link because they exceed the file size for email. But um, 
we definitely uh, have had problems, uh, you know, all along, including very recently where, you know, someone sends me a picture and I, I have to write back and I say, you know, I think this has super potential, but, you know, a 26 kilobyte image is really not doing justice to whatever effort you put in. Can I get one bigger? Like, what's it's a couple of megabytes? Like, you know, basically it's barely a thumbnail and you can't make out anything. And, but they don't think about it and then they just let it rip and you have to remind them. We actually want to be able to see the photo to critique it. Um, and then some, you know, basic stuff about what we want included. So then here's the wide field certificate criteria. And I'm not going to read it at you, but you can see the long list here of potential targets suggestions they're not requirements but you know we're looking for people to expand their own horizons while they're pursuing the certificate so we don't want um 15 pictures of the moon and we don't want 15 pictures of the milky way um we want people to to show some breadth and show that they're as a wide as a skyscape shooter that their their uh, portfolio is is um broad and open to the, all the possibilities, conjunctions, asterisms, full constellations, obviously our nearest neighbors, et cetera. But, you know, we're looking for breadth, not just quality in, you know, one narrow, like the person could be a fanatic solar imager and we use 15 photos of the sun. It's not what we're looking for. Um, and then on the solar system side, much simpler in terms of the expectations, fewer pictures required. We're looking for now, you know, this is typically done, not to always, like some of them can be snapshots, but we're typically looking for, you know, video, um, some uh, indication that they know how to process uh, an extensive set of stills from a video uh, into a, a picture with low noise and uh, lots of detail. Uh, we're looking at focus. Also, we, you know, we want to see things like, you know, I like to see a picture of Jupiter, but, you know, there, are, if you can get one of the moons and, you know, they have to deal with the incredible dynamic range and figure all that out. And uh, so we put a little bit of pressure on there, but um, uh, is, I would think it's very reasonable. And then in the um, deep sky category, um, it's uh, almost simpler still. We just basically, <laughs> I need, you know, basically two emission or reflection nebulae, two spiral, two galaxies, two planetary nebulae, two open clusters, two globulars. Two dark nebulae or comet and it adds up to 12 and you're you're golden but you know we want again to to push people into trying all kinds of things one guy made a submission it was just killer good and i said okay we're a little light on the whole globular cluster category and he's like wow i've never photographed them i don't even like them okay um get that but to be fair to everybody else who's gone before you um we're looking for bread, um, have a go at it. And, you know, and we'll work with the people and help them, you know, say like, these ones are up right now, your rig would be perfect for this one, this one, or, you know, a dark nebulae, they don't know how to process those, they're tricky. Give them some some guidance, you know, encourage them to stretch and, and then go for it. And, uh, and again, like with the solar system, we're looking for, you know, um, knowledge about stacking, how to use flats, uh, quality focus, et cetera. Um, one, uh, one of the deep sky judges, uh, Blair, he's very, um, um, picky about, uh, noise, clipping of the blacks and whites and noise. Um, and, um, and it's important that all the judges have a different kind of, um, bugbear, you know, like something that really gets them. So, you know, Luca will always tell me a hundred percent of the time, this guy's got nine skyscapes <laughs> and he needs 10. So uh, it's, uh, I don't count them. I'm bad at that, right? I was like, I'm looking at the pictures. I'm getting the big, you know, okay. I, I'm feeling this guy's got a good portfolio and Luca always catches. So we need everybody, you know, bringing that attention because, you know, we want to stand by the criteria we gave people and say, you know, this is what we've asked everyone before you to do. So, you know, we're not being unreasonable to ask it of you. Um, you know, uh, Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So that's what it looks like. And then at the bottom of the page, there are three forms, PDFs you download, you fill them in, your address, what center you're in, if you're a member of a, a local center, um, et cetera. And then we expect you to tick off which ones you're actually submitting. And then we expect a text file uh, that uh, 
describes not just the technical details of the photos. Uh, and we used to get this without really any pushing, but what we want to know is what were you thinking about when you took the photo? What inspired you to take this thing versus one right beside it in the night sky? And, you know, give us some of the sense of what it feels like to be out under the stars doing this and um, um, bring it alive. And and for me, as the person who loads their galleries onto Zenfolio, which we're going to look at in a second, um, uh, I would just say, please, please, please do it in a .txt file. Um, I have people send them to me in these elaborate spreadsheets with all kinds of macros running. It takes me like two hours to copy, you know, the text for 12 photos into into their website. And it's like, you know, cheapers, you know, put a bullet in me now, please. <laughs> it's just, I can't believe how long it takes. So yeah, straight text file would be ideal. Okay, so back to the presentation. Um, we're going to look at some galleries, um, but, um, yeah, I tell you what, I will take us to, no, we're just going to go and look. So here's what I did. Uh, I did my best. Um, for some reason, something about my copy of, uh, Adobe, uh, Acrobat, a bunch of the locations in the files, uh, weren't displaying. So I, I found everyone I'm. I know for sure all these people are in Alberta. I found as many people in the Edmonton Center as I could, but not very many. So um, I'm embarrassed if there are more people from Edmonton. I've forgotten they were in Edmonton and, uh, and I couldn't find proof they were in Edmonton. So I got um, queued up some galleries from people who uh, definitely in Alberta. And obviously in the case of Alistair, I know for sure he's uh, associated with the Edmonton Center. So if you want, we can just go ahead. And so am I. Oh, what? But I thought you lived in Calgary. No, we've been through this before. No, I know. I have. I have this. <laughs> I'm just hopeless. Okay, That's so okay. I, I need, to, I need to change that. That's all right. Uh, uh, okay, so let's just go through in that order, so you get a sense of what they've done. Sure. And and you know, people who've been in the hobby a long time will know John Myrtle's name. Um, he's he goes back to the, you know. Um, cold cameras, you know, nitrogen, uh, solid nitrogen, um, sorry, not solid nitrogen, solid carbon dioxide, like dry ice packed in cold cameras and tech pan hybrid, uh, all the way to today. He's posted an image, uh, this morning, uh, that he took with a brand, you know, he just bought a used one shot color cam CCD camera. Uh, he's seriously devoted imager and he's in all kinds of books and publications over his career. So these are samples, uh, the, these are the thumbnails. We don't have to necessarily open them all up, but this gives you a sense of the breadth of his portfolio. Um, so comets, dark nebulae, open clusters, globulars, planetary nebulae, galaxies, emission and reflection nebulae. Um, and, you know, some of the, I think these are all uh, digital photos. Uh, I think I actually included a film photo in mine. Um, but uh, to give you an idea, the um, the oh, and one of the reasons you see me and Blair at the top here is because we all agreed that judges should be able to prove that to be a judge, you should be qualified to get the certificate you're judging the category on. So um, so we all put a portfolio in. But you can see uh, there's a lot of people who have submitted over the years, and you know, yeah, and you can just eyeball um, the thumbnail that represents their gallery. Some of these people have just astonishing uh, talent and some of them you know they're relative beginners and uh it doesn't disqualify them but um but there are some you know incredible talents uh submitting portfolios um and and one of the things for me that's been really rewarding is um uh, is why i spend so much time on instagram looking for canadian imagers that are rising stars i mean there's and a huge amount of talent and they are not using traditional mechanisms to get noticed. And, uh, and um, I don't think it, uh, I think it behooves us to, to reach out and find them and, uh, and get them some profile. So uh, that was John and Meek, you may know he's in Cal, he lives in the South end of Calgary, which is where John lives as well. Oddly. And they don't know each other. They both swear they don't know each other. I think they can walk each other's houses and they've both been in the hobby forever. So, you know, I don't know. But anyway, so this is Dan's portfolio. Um, 
uh, all, you know, excellent photos. You can see differences in processing style between Dan and John. Um, then we have Joel Weatherly, who, uh, now this is not a deep sky, this is a, a wide field. Um, uh, Joel had some really great shots. This would, this one here with the uh, ISS going across and um, the roof line. Uh, once in a while, we'll get somebody who you know says, you know, hey, I took a picture of a, you know, a lunar halo, great, or a solar halo, right? Snapshot. And you know, there's power lines in the way in a hydro pole, and you know, a whole bunch of distractions in the foreground. And you say, you know, this is a one one hundredth of a second astro shot. I mean, could you walk out onto the road and get the shot without all this crap in the foreground? So uh, this is where we talk about the artistry and the expectation. It's like we want people to actually produce something they would print and hang on their wall, not something that gets a check mark on on some form, right? So we uh, we do put some pressure. Uh, this uh, this uh, aurora shot just knocked me out totally. I thought this was wonderful. Um, this would be, you know, I'm not picking on him. Uh, he's a good guy, but uh, you know, this is the kind of thing you say, you know, could you have moved so that the entire halo was visible? I don't know, maybe like I didn't. It, it's it's the kind of stuff we would lean on someone on, but you know, there were so many great shots in this portfolio that you know we just felt there's there's no issue. Um, but then uh, Dalton, you guys know Dalton. He's a very uh, experienced imager, helps a lot of people. Um, and oh yeah. Some of these galleries still resist the uh, attempt to get them to show all the pictures at once. Um, but, uh, you know, again, you can see processing styles very different. Um, some people uh, have traveled to take photos. Um, this might be Omega Centauri. I'm, uh... Yeah, so this is uh, Omega Centauri. And I think he went south to take this photo. I don't think you can take it from Alberta. I'd be stunned. He, I, I, he took it from Rusty's RV Ranch uh, near Arizona Sky Village. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, which qualifies because he did all the work. We don't care. We, there's no rule that says you have to take it to Canada. It's just, But you have to take it yourself. You can't just download data. Um, Alistair, he has a... a a um, a really nice wide field uh, portfolio. Um, it's kind of from the Luca school. Got a lot of these, you know, animations and stuff like this. This um, Sun Dog uh, that that's as good. As, I mean, they don't get cooler than that. It's obviously a a, a pan like a I don't. It's not a single frame, but uh, you know, this is kind of like you know, science magazine kind mm -hmm. of quality. Like it's an incredible amount of stuff going on there that is rarely seen. Uh, never mind photographed that well. And that uh, one requires the chimney to be there. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some of the stuff some of this stuff is uh yeah. <laughs> when I do my solar uh, ones, I'm always lining up some tree in the foreground, you know, to and people say, you know, what's up with that? Is it well, <laughs> trust me, <laughs> other than the fact I wouldn't be able to see for a day, uh I uh I need I need to see some faint stuff and I can't have the sun blazing. Um Star Trail, cityscapes with things going on in the background, uh animations like the uh, the moonrise. Uh this is just a great portfolio. Um uh, and uh then Eric. Now here, um you know, as a as a deep sky judge, I would look at this Orion and I would say, wow, that's great. I love that shot. The M33, I think it's great. I think the M31 is great. The two planetaries, you know, I could see some things that, you know, I might say, well, you know, maybe the focus is not perfect, but it's pretty good. Color is excellent. Get into um, things like the Pleiades, say, you know, up in the top left where the Merope Nebula would be. It'd be nice to see a little more red there. Um, Things like that. You look at the uh, globular in the bottom left corner, and you say, 
you know, Blair would be saying, well, the background looks kind of clipped. And then, you know, I might load it into Photoshop and check to see if the histogram is okay. So when we're judging a deep sky sh shot, we typically, I frequently load their portfolio into Photoshop to have a look at some of the things that are easy to throw, you know, spitball at and sound like you're some kind of super snob, but they're, you know, don't say it's clipped unless you prove it, right? So I frequently screening submissions, I'll send person, you know, uh, a screen capture of their picture in Photoshop, show them what a clip background looks like, show them how the histograms chopped off, explain why they're losing some cool things that are probably in their data, but they processed it out by accidentally clipping the background. And um, so we do a lot of education while we're critiquing them and go back with, you know, like a, a whole story about what, uh, what would make their photos better photos. Um, and then um, Kimberly, who won a whole bunch of prizes. So here she's uh, reminding me <laughs> of the black and white photos. Um, uh, she's a professional photographer and um, a real talent. And she won uh, at least one of the prizes in the recent um, and, um, General Assembly photo competition. Uh, I was one of the two judges for that. And... Uh, they said, oh, it's all blind. You won't be able to, you know, you won't be influenced by whose photo it is. And say, I'm sorry, I've been doing this imaging certificate thing for as long as it's been on. I know almost all of these photos already. <laughs> I knew who all of, they were, all of them were from. But uh, I, I was successful in pretending I didn't know who they were. But anyway, she, she has some just superb stuff in here. Um, really, really quite a talent. And she's a deep sky imager too. But the, this is her wide field portfolio. Um, yeah, no, uh, no shortage of talent there, and uh, and then Lucas. And I I love Lucas' ideas around the cityscapes and how we live this technological life, and we're surrounded by nature and these magnificent things going on in the background and and you know uh, you know not to take away from him but you know i often show someone a picture of a lunar or a solar halo and they'll say wow those must be really rare i said no they're common you just never look up like people go through their day day after day never thinking about these grand things going on around them and above them and luca does a fabulous job of showcasing uh, a host of different uh, phenomena Is your APOD in this set? No. Oh, too no. bad. This one I love. I remember this one, the bottom left one, the the, the lunar eclipse. That's just so good. Anyway, back to the presentation. So that gives you a sense, uh, hopefully, of whoops, of uh, how. Uh, the breadth and, and uh, range of submissions that we've gotten just from Alberta, never mind uh, until like when you look at all the galleries, so there, there are a lot of submissions and there's a lot of talent out there. And one of the things that's uh, kind of amazing, um, one example is um, the person who won multiple prizes at this year's General Assembly for the photo competition. When she submitted her first portfolio for a certificate, um, I send it back before, you know, with some critiques saying, you know, and gave her some pointers on processing and blah, blah, blah. And now I, I probably take lessons from her. Like she, in the space of, you know, two years has gone from being, you know, a, a real beginner to being an elite photographer. And uh, so, and I'm thinking what we're, part of what we're trying to achieve in the imaging certificates is to encourage people to take this journey, not to just get a prize, you know, show, you know, dig up some photos, send them in, we'll give you a cookie. No, it's like, this is to encourage people to take this very seriously, get better at it all the time. And we start them on that journey by, you know, giving them a critique that hopefully helps them, you know, with uh, subsequent, you know, future imaging, uh, virtually every single person when the critique comes in, uh, 
I, what I get back privately is, you know, oh my God, no one has ever offered me this much uh, help on my imaging. I, I have no idea how to say thanks. And uh, they, they immediately up their game and uh, become more enthusiastic. So I feel really good about what the impact we're having. Um, we, we definitely approach it in the spirit of uh, encouragement and constructive critique uh, and not as snobs or, you know, armchair critics or whatever, you know, we're, we're trying to help people get into the hobby and then get better at that. So that's the part about the certificates. Um, what do you want to do? Is there is there any questions? Maybe yeah, we want to stop here and talk years or anything. Um, um, yeah, that would be maybe a good time. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions, or 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 pass them to Luca to answer. <laughs> I guess I got a question. Um, I get, it's a pretty simple one, but um, are your like galleries uh, dynamic as in you keep adding to them or is it just the submissions at the time of the certificate uh, application? That is a great question. Uh, I would love to say they're dynamic. Um, the curating of them is and the, and the logins and passwords and all that kind of preclude them being dynamic. So for now, we have just said it's the winning submission that gets showcased. Um, probably most of the, well, I shouldn't say most, but half the submissions probably are from people who have their own website. Uh, we've had people say, you know, here's my website. These are the ones I want you to look at. And like, oh, all right, that's a start. Um, but um, most of the time they send the actual photos, uh, but frequently they have a website where they're also putting them. Um, some people live on Instagram and don't have a website. Um, and I would love to be able to curate their gallery on an ongoing basis, but A, I don't have the bandwidth, and B, the RSC wouldn't be cool with sharing the password to the website with everybody who got a certificate. So long answer to a simple question, but the answer, I guess, is for now, no. It'd be kind of a cool that thing, makes... though. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, I have my own websites, two of them, well, one for all my photography and one just for pixel peeping. Uh, uh, John Myrtle and I share a website called astrophoto.ca. And, uh, you know, there I put massive files and people can download them and, you know, put them in Photoshop and play with them and come back and complain about all kinds of stuff. And then uh, I'll fix them sometimes. But uh on my Zenfolio site, which is for my general photography, you can't download the photos. It's all very, you know, commercial and protected and, you know, and funny story, just not to make it about me, and it's not an Astro story, but from the astrophoto.ca website, which is why I went to Zenfolio for my general photography, I had a picture of the Grand Canyon. Uh, and I was proud of it. It was a good, a good picture, I think. And John, who called me one day, he says, you know, like, what's going on here? He says, like, 97% of the traffic on our website is this one photo of yours. I'm like, really? And so I start looking into it, and I find out that all kinds of people have been stealing the photo, and a bunch of travel companies around the world were all using the same photo to, you know, advertise their travel uh, packages for the Grand Canyon. Turned out one guy used it as his signature photo, and he was on some... Um, video gaming chat group where there were like 10,000 messages in this chat group and it reloaded the page every time you logged into it and he was the most active member so my photo would get reloaded like a thousand times a day on this website and it would and he point he put the whole photo in his signature like he didn't put a thumbnail he put the actual link to my photo and uh oh my goodness it just went on and on I ended up having to call Google and say you know you got to do something but these people are making money off my photo and this one guy was in romania or someplace and they went and kicked his door down and these stormtroopers go in and he sends me these emails screaming call them off call them off i promise i'll stop and i just was cracking up i said well like dude what do you why are you stealing my photo and he's like oh he was all apologetic and it was just the craziest thing but anyway now i use zenfolio and people can't do that um yeah, anyway, sorry for rambling. Um, any other thoughts on the, the certificates? I would encourage everybody to look at the galleries, not just the ones, you know, go deeper on the ones we've got here from uh, local gang, but um, um, 
just have a look. There are some just amazing talents in there. I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, like uh, some. I talked to Andrea uh, in Ottawa there, and yeah, I I, I I actually talked to her about a little bit of a hesitation to maybe submit a portfolio because you feel like that's it. <laughs> And maybe you haven't done your best work yet and uh, your best work is yet to come. And I know for me, that's kind of how I feel looking back at my older pictures. It's like, you know, lots of ways I could improve over them and wish I had paid more attention to my focus and things like this. But uh, um, the point I'm saying is like, you're, you're trying to get beginners here to, to like, this is this is like a a way to start that road what you said that journey to becoming better and and this is kind uh, of part of that i i would i would say uh, almost exactly true um i'm absolutely i there are a couple of canadian imagers who are quite famous uh, one a close friend of mine is uh, carrie ann lucky hepburn i did not go and pester her to submit a portfolio i mean she's world famous she's taking people to the Atacama desert on tours and doing all kinds of stuff, you know, um, Ron Brescher, I don't, I don't ask him to, to do that, but, um, but it is not meant to be, um, only for beginners. What we're after is we're looking for people to, who are like, I don't know, am I good enough? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's, and then we help them. Right. But, you know, um, but if somebody is an established imager, like Dalton, uh, uh he's a, a john you know I pestered some of my friends to submit portfolios right at the gate um but um uh no lots of the portfolios you go through it you'll see some that are just jaw-dropping good and these are not beginners but um but what i'm doing on instagram is i'm looking for people who aren't known and are getting started and uh, chasing them preferentially to get them to log in. And I will say, I know it's a, a small group, but um, I put a, I, I look, uh, especially when I see um, uh, up and coming women imagers, I encourage them, especially. Um, I say, I've seen, I remember reading a story just recently, a woman imager in Ontario who was really talented and she organized a star party for her astronomy club and she set up and, and she was a really good imager, but new. And, uh, she's the whole evening, a guy set up right beside her and talked at the loud, top of his voice about how women are ruining the hobby and they have no business being in the hobby. They're, they're just a, you know, uh, a waste of time and it, it wouldn't shut up. And it was, it's, and, and I think, and this happens way too much, this kind of crap. So, I really uh, make an effort like with Andrea and, and many of the other uh, women who are, you know, new in the hobby uh, and new in the imaging side of it. Um, I want to get them profile. I want people to realize there are a ton of talented women imagers out here. And this is not a guy's club and it's not a shop. They should feel the awkward or nervous about walking through the door and taking a seat. So that's another reason I'm on Instagram. Oh, that's perfect. Excellent. And uh, by the way, when we started this, the judging thing, it was all guys, which made me nuts privately. But um, then um, Tenho Tuomi, who was one of the founder, founding members, he's in Saskatchewan, he didn't want to do it anymore. And um, so uh, I turned the the chair roll over to me and, and exited. Uh, so I wanted to get someone from the West to make sure we kept balance across the country but I want to make sure we got a woman imager to replace. So I went through all the winners and found three superstars in the West. And uh, uh, Kimberly was the closest to where Tenho lives. So uh, I asked her and she was kind enough to agree to take his seat. Excellent. Um, Very good. Okay, yeah, and like I don't, you guys have a more of a time budget than I do. So, um, being a retired guy, um, yeah, like, um, you want to talk a little more about the, like, I got a one thing, this one slide that's kind of interesting about the scope at SRO. Do you want to hear that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, shift gears and uh, talk about that, and because uh, that's uh, that's like a two for one special here. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it's uh, where's my cursor? There we are. So um, sometime around 2017, um, the RSC got uh, involved with um, got it in their heads they wanted to own a remote telescope in a premium location. So um, I want to see if the person's name is not here, but it turns out they're a good friend of mine. Uh, had a scope at Sierra Remote Observatories in California and was looking to sell it. And um, so they uh, they agreed to buy it. It's a 16-inch Arcos, carbon fiber, um, astrocidal mirror, like zero expansion, um, Paramount ME. And they bought a new camera from SBIG because, you know, SBIG's Canadian now and uh, put that all together. And then there was this notice comes through uh, with bulletin or one of the newsletters from RC saying they were looking for people to help with this remote telescope project. And I'm looking at this telescope, where it is in the configuration. And I'm like, what are the odds? I know a guy who has exactly this setup at us. <laughs> I phoned him, is this your telescope? Yeah. I said, uh, do you need help getting it off your hands? Like, yeah, please. I said, okay. So I signed up to be, the ops lead because I have a very similar setup, and uh, so uh, I was helping with that and writing manuals and instructions on how to use it and all that. So for uh, four years at least, we've been doing pretty picture photography, science, and public outreach or school outreach with this uh, this rig. But um, at the end of uh, last year, I guess the RSC came to realization they were in some financial trouble and so this thing was generating lots of interest in science lots of interest in outreach it wasn't paying its way and they were hoping the photography packages would sell enough to cover the cost and they weren't selling enough so they're going to um, shut it down so if you guys knew anyone who had a RESC center that was able to host a fabulous telescope um, you would start to uh, getting your story ready because uh, they're going to try and sell it in situ um, to someone who wants a 16 inch R cost at SRO. And the SRO guys have said they'll allow them to take over the lease and the preferential uh, rent because the person the scope was purchased from helps the SRO get going and has got a, got a good deal on the rent as a result. Um, but uh, if they don't sell it uh, soon, um, they're going to put something together for the uh, various centers to bid, you know, bid for it and say, you know, where could it go? Because one, once the hosting costs are gone, the cost is actually pretty modest. But, you know, it, it's expensive to be hosted at a place like SRO or New, New Mexico Skies, places like that. So um, anyway, so I just wanted to let you know um, I'm uh, part of the group that's winding it down and uh, I'll be in charge of doing the really cool demos if somebody wants to see it run um, and buy it. Uh, but, you know, it's possible mid this year or late this year, you'll see it being offered for to the centers. So get ready because you might be able to get your hands on a pretty sweet piece of equipment. Uh, Anyway, that's um, that's the bulk of what I wanted to cover. Everything else in the deck is just pictures I took, and we can talk about imaging and image processing. Uh, I got uh, any amount of time you want to spend just chatting about that in general, but I won't I won't do that unless people want to. Did uh, Did anybody have any questions for um, for Stuart there regarding um, the program? that uh that he's kind of uh undertaken and or uh something that i i just wanted to mention is the feedback that that option for feedback i think is really kind of valuable and that's not just uh like something you'd submit and say well thank you very much but uh denied or, <laughs> yeah. or something like that it's it's something that it's you know it's helping it sounds like you're tr we're trying to all help each other so definitely and, and you know i'm not perfect at it but i remember the other day i was going through my emails and i sent this uh, woman a note i said okay like it's been you know almost a year are you still working on this thing oh yeah thanks for the reminder you know and she i'm i'm totally going to do it and 
she got all excited again and uh, i said you know don't give up you're this close but uh you know uh uh we want people to to stay at it we want to encourage people and uh, um i would say with you know essentially no exception people have been um, very um, appreciative of the, the t- pointers that come especially from luca and kimberly when it comes to wide field stuff especially they give them really specific guidance about what's not in the photo that needs to be there or what's in the photo that shouldn't be in there and um uh i try to do the same with the deep sky um but generally you know i pre-filter them as well because i know from now uh, at this point which ones are are going to get pushed back so i warn them and i always tell them i say i'm happy to let it rip but i can assure you this one and this one you're gonna you're gonna get the feedback on so why don't we fix it now and they always go for it like a lot of times we're our own worst critics um um but sometimes we like i know for me i don't know how to you know approach a certain problem or to get a mask right. to fit fit things properly and get things selected the right way and well like i'm still uh, he, learning i'm the new guy in the block so here's here's what there's from yesterday uh i have a picture um here i can share it for a second um so this is my latest photo i just put this one together this is m 106 so uh um this is with a six inch refractor and a large chip uh, ccd camera and i was having a heck of a time processing this i was just bombing i was going to throw the data it was a huge amount of data i was going to toss it and then this guy on the discussion list that i shared these photos with um, said you know can you send me your rgb master before you did any processing and see if i can figure it out okay sure i sent it to him and he says, mm, there's something really off here like i was getting green stars all kinds of crazy stuff he said, can you send me the rgb separate images that's sure and an hour later he writes back he says i'm pretty sure you've got them in the wrong order <laughs> I've only been doing this for 20 years. And uh, I accidentally put the RGB in the wrong order. So um, I had the green in the blue channel and the blue in the green channel or whatever. <laughs> it was impossible to process this. Uh, so I said, okay, let me start over again. Then this came out. So uh, there are days where you just think, you know, uh, you need to ask somebody to look at what you're doing because you've got that forest or the trees thing going and you can't see it anymore you know you keep trying the same thing thinking you're going to get a different result and you realize way too late that the problem was way back in the workflow at the very beginning and nothing you were going to do was ever going to undo the harm of putting the green in the wrong channel uh luca did you want to add anything i uh i didn't mean to speak entirely for you and kimberly but um I do uh, definitely appreciate uh, you two specifically are the most enthusiastic uh, contributors in terms of the judging panel. No, I don't really have much to add. It's It's been fun uh, doing it because it's not high volume for one thing, so it's not super onerous. And uh, it's nice to see what other people are doing. Sometimes you yeah. go, oh, I never thought of taking that picture or never never looked at it quite that way and that's in all the three categories and i've kind of gotten to know what the deep sky preferences are for people that i don't do it but at least i know what what the uh, what the key points are so it's been interesting learning about deep sky and what what the, the people are looking for uh the same, same thing on the solar just some of the techniques that i would never even think of trying or mm-hmm. bother with you know, people just here we go I did it I stacked it this way or I did that so you get exposed to a lot being on the on the on the on the judging panel although if you just cruise the galleries and then read the descriptions you can uh, get almost the same thing uh, yeah some of the people provide a lot of information which is really helpful mm-hmm. to other people who are you know they look at the shot and say well if I wanted to do that what what kind of scope what kind of camera uh how much exposure um if further in the deck uh, i have an example i think in this one um 
um, this is, I, I don't want to open a can of worms, so this has to do with another topic entirely in the RSC, but I show a picture of the flying bat nebula I took in 2010, and I was really proud of it. It looks great. And then two years after I took that photo, someone discovered this thing called the squid nebula right in the center of it. And it's 100% O3 signal. And uh, if you if you try to capture it, you find out it's mind-bogglingly faint and you need a ton of data. So I have another version of the same object now with the squid very visible and how much was involved in capturing that and how hard it was to process. But, you know, one of the things I think what uh, Luke is lifting up is you look at that picture and you say, oh, I'm going to try and take that picture. Well, you want to read the text because you're about to bite off a whopper of a challenge if you're going after that thing. And you need some guidance on what to do to get ready because it's going to be multi-nights. You're going to need special filters. And uh, it's not that easy. Uh, some of them are the uh, the Luke Andromeda galaxy is a no-brainer. You can pretty much take that picture with anything and you'll be happy. But some of these things are really obscure. And um, it's nice to have the narrative under the picture. You say, if I'm going to copy this, what am I What am I signing up for? I think that's good. Is there any changes uh, coming in the future to the program? Or is there some area that like, um, is still, you, st you talk about how like um, there's still some refining maybe going on with the programs and what, um, and maybe as more imagers come in, that maybe changes the program a little bit? Um, there aren't any plan changes. One of the things that uh, we had a long debate about a while back was to layer in, you know, another elite level of certification above this. And, um, we ended up not doing that. And uh, I'm thinking there's some bitterness on the front of with the people who wanted that. Um, but, you know, you look at the, uh, uh, Luca has a a pod, Kimberly has an a pod. I got one. Um, like if you're, if you want to be held up as elite, there are global forums where you can be recognized, um, get published in sky and telescope magazine, astronomy magazine mm -hmm. um you know like i just feel like i don't want to necessarily cross the line and cater to you know creating a stratification where you know there's some kind of club that you're trying to get into like we're, we're trying to encourage people to embrace the hobby and we set the bar challenging enough that if you get your certificate you have produced a really good portfolio you should be super proud of whether you go on to make way better photos we hope you do you know you can have your own website or instagram account or facebook or whatever you want i mean whatever works for you but um um i'm not looking to create some kind of stratified you know gallery or hall of fame or something you know where like we're pandering to people's egos now like i just think this is really about getting people into the hobby and encouraging them and helping them get going and giving them a present for having made the effort by giving them a certificate to hang on their wall in a gallery that shows off their achievement so that's the soapbox speech but i mean my at the end of my day i would say um i like what we're doing i think it's fitting filling a role i don't uh you know, it'd be like having a visual certificate for the Messier, it, only if you do it in one night. But, all right. Okay. That would be cool. But you know what? Is The point isn't the point to be out under the stars appreciating the universe and the, you know, the companionship of other fellow astronomers who are similarly motivated. Not, you know, we're not trying to create some kind of, you know, snobbery thing so so my my i was pushing back on this and we ended up agreeing not to do it uh, as a consensus but uh, the person wanting it was was unhappy about that decision but it's a it's a team and that's where we landed we're just trying to get people to get excited and then say okay they want to know what's involved what do i have to do well, here's here take all these pictures send them in we'll give you a critique we'll help you and um, at the end of it you'll be a better photographer and you'll get a prize and and then the rest of the journey is up to you. 
Well, that sounds perfect, uh, Stuart. Well, I, I think that's probably a really good natural place to end it okay. for this evening. Um, like I say, there'll be a YouTube video to follow. And um, how do, what's the best way to get a hold of you if we do have questions? You know, a lot, a lot of these YouTube videos, the last they'll post questions and somebody will watch it in a year or two. And then, uh, you know, so what's the best way to get a hold of you if they have cool. questions about this? Um... Do you have my email address or are we doing, if we've only been doing this through Instagram, I'll send you my email address. And yeah, and or just in. look look for your name on, on Instagram, basically. And Oh, yeah, can, they can, can get me that way. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you have a website as well? Yep, yep, stuarthage.com, my, my email, you can, they can reach me through that too. Perfect, perfect. Well, unless there's any other questions or if I'm uh, missing something obvious, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Stuart, again, for uh, giving us an hour of your time to explain the program. And uh, yeah, I think it's something that I'll uh, try to put put together a portfolio because I probably have enough images to kind of make it. Make for sure you do. I, uh, what you're doing on Instagram says, like, send it in. It's, yeah. it's time. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate the invite and, uh, and the enthusiasm.